Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's an exciting day for me and hopefully an exciting day for some of you guys because I'm sure most of my subscribers are here for my first trailer build. Uh, so today, we're gonna get started on the second one. Just to give you an idea of what we're going for here, uh, this trailer is actually going to be able to have a rack uh, with a rooftop tent and an awning. My previous trailer was about 12 foot overall length. This one's going to be about 8 foot overall length um, with the main box part of it being 5 foot uh, by 4 foot. Then we're going to do some 31 to 33 inch tires, haven't decided yet. Some timber and axles, kind of like the last one. This one's going to be more reinforced because I expect it to be housing more weight. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Just to give you an idea of the materials I'm using, about 36 foot of 2x2, two two, which is what I built my entire trailer out of last time. It's going to be about 110 pounds or so. And then also about 16 foot of 1x1, one one, which is these little ones are going to be 1x1. One one. These outside ones are 2x2, two two, and then there's a 2x2 two two that goes between the timberins. Sides are going to come up like this. That's going to be made out of 1x1. One one. And then obviously there's going to end up being a rack for rooftop tent. I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do yet. It's kind of one of those things, kind of like the last build I did with the fenders. Uh, I just kind of want to get to that point and then I'll figure it out. Same as last time, we're cutting with our Harbor Freight bandsaw. So we got our tongue cut, which this is eight feet right here. But then I want the inside space of the trailer to be four feet. But vertical walls are going to be one inch thick. So what I did was cut this to approximately 50 inches. So I gave myself another inch and actually I did 50 inches and a quarter to make space for some welds as well. So basically once these one inch bars are vertical on this, I'm still going to have a four foot wide space here. And that's important not just because I want it to be four feet, but because it's gonna have an aluminum floor. It comes in a four by eight sheet. So if it's exactly four inch gap between the vertical rails, then all I gotta do is cut it to length. I don't have to rip the side of it and it'll just lay right in there. So I got my side pieces cut. Those are five foot each, um, cause that's how long I want my box to be. It'll be five foot four when it's said and done because two extra inches here and two extra inches there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and tack this up. Make sure it's nice and square right here on both sides. Go ahead and tack that. That's gonna kind of set the pace for the rest of the trailer. Um, that's what I did last time and it worked out pretty good. So we'll get right to it. Centerpiece tacked up. Uh, next, we're gonna work on measuring for our bars from across the front there. What I'm doing is I've measured from this corner to that corner. Uh, they're both 79 and three quarters. So when you measure an X across a box of any sort, uh, that'll tell you it's square. So I know that where my sidebars are sitting, even though they're not tacked up, that it is square if I were to measure the gap right here. So basically what I'm gonna do next is measure this gap here and here, I cut that to length, put them in place, verify my square from measuring corner to corner, and then I'm gonna kind of tack everything up. We got our two front pieces cut there. They ended up being uh, 24 and like a 16th. The 16th because of that little bit of extra space I gave on that back bar to allow the 4x8 aluminum sheet to fit later on. All tacked up. It's all measured up. It's uh, it's within a 16th of being square, which is fine. Got all my one by ones cut. They are not welded or tacked in place. I just kind of set them in the uh, relative position that they will be fixed in. I'm going to space them every foot. So it's a five foot, so it'll be one, two, three, four, work out perfect. But yeah, once I get these all tacked up, frame's gonna be pretty good to go. I need to do some supports from here to here. And then it's all about welding it all in. I got one side of my supports tacked. Basically what I've done is took some scrap one by one to space it up closer to where I'm gonna have it. And then I took these two magnets to hold it flush with the surface of the trailer and then I'm just tacking each little corner on it. I'm going through, I'm gonna do these next four. Um, and then that'll also help keep the frame real straight once I go to finish welding. But once I get these tacked in, I'm gonna work on my diagonal supports. And then we'll, uh, we'll move on to welding the frame up. We got these braces cut. Ended up being 34 inches from each of the longest corners right here this way. And a 45 degree cut on the bandsaw, as you can see. And now the frame's really looking nice and tied together. 
my first welds on the frame is I went and did each joining outside edge at each corner. So as a, a weld cools, it shrinks. As that was shrinking, technically it would be trying to pull this this way. Of course, the fact that all these are tacked, we got those braces tacked, all that stuff, it really couldn't do much pulling anyways. Uh, but you go ahead and do each one of these corners and they all pull against each other to keep the frame square. And then I went ahead and did this inside edge and this inside edge on our main backbone here. And then I did this corner, that corner, that corner, and that corner. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do this part on all four corners, as well as the reverse side. So I'll do this, tilt it up, do the opposite side, go to that corner, do that, that corner, and then that corner. All right guys, made some solid progress on it today. I got every bit welded up on this main frame. And then after that, I went ahead and, so this surface is gonna have a four by five aluminum sheet on it. Well, it's gotta be able to sit flush across this whole surface. Um, so I went ahead and made everything flat from all the welds, any of the welds that were sticking up slightly. I'm actually, my last frame, I coated in this Valspar stuff. This time, I'm actually gonna go with Steel It. Um, I used Steel It on a few things for my motorcycle and for the truck, and it worked out really awesome. It's easy to apply, easy to touch up, uh, just kind of everything about it. Kind of points in a better direction than the Valspar stuff I used before. Don't get me wrong, the Valspar coating was awesome. It still is, it's holding up great on the other trailer but I think the steel it is gonna be better, mainly just for the sole purpose that I can kind of touch things up, so. Today, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start working on these walls that are gonna go around the edges. Um, it's gonna be a wall here, 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 and on the back, it's either gonna be a tailgate that folds down or a gate that swings open. Haven't quite decided yet. I gotta look at my hinge options um, and just kind of see how the walls turn out. The The rack's gonna be pretty much last. Um, I'm gonna do the walls, I'm gonna do the wheel wells, and then the rack is gonna go after that because it's gonna be mounted on the outside of the rails because I want this space in here to be exactly four feet. So I think what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure, figure out how tall I want it. That is 16 inches uh, from the base of the trailer up to here um, and the top of the rail 16 inches looks good. That's with the cooler and also a jug for comparison. I feel like that's a good height. That's kind of like an average uh, load for a trailer like this is going to be. And also it'll allow a strap to be run through top panels of jugs to help secure them in the trailer. So I think that's the, that's the height I'm going to go with and it'll work out best for me. Got my first corner upright tacked. Basically what I did is use some magnets to hold it right where I wanted it. Clamped this level and made sure that it was straight up and down this way. Also made sure the trailer itself was nice and level. It should ensure that it's gonna be, gonna be nice and straight up and down for me. All right, we got all four of our uprights tacked in place. Um, I just cut these top rails 64 inches. Um, same length as it's five foot four. So from this edge to this edge, I'm gonna go ahead and get those tacked into place next. After that, I'm going to measure how long of a piece I'm gonna need from there to there. And we'll go ahead and get that cut. And then all of these are actually my supports. So there will be three on the front and four on the sides. Same with matching the uh, supports there in the bottom of the trailer. And that will kind of complete the structure of the walls. It's gonna end up getting uh, plated in the aluminum. We're gonna get that all, all made up. Got all of our verticals tacked in place. Obviously we left this back open because we're, we're gonna make a tailgate or swing out of some sort. That can be done later on. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, burn in the rest of this. All right guys, we got the walls all burned in. Uh, notice in the time lapse how I was alternating. So I do like outside, inside, outside, inside, and kind of work my way all around 
uh, just because even though it is all tacked together, you can still get some pulling, especially if you just went along and it just did this inside edge, just boom, 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 boom. As that weld cools, they're all going to start slightly pulling. I think my next goal is to make some caps for these tubes that are open. All right, so I cut all these that I need to cap the end. They'll just kind of fit right inside there and I can tack it up. Um, and that way, when I grind it down, it'll all be nice and flush. Same for these. You can see they fit just inside. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be filling the cracks with weld. Obviously, just don't want the cracks too, too big or you won't be able to fill it. You can see here, just took the welder and just very lightly made some seams around here. Uh, I'll be able to grind that flush. And then right about here, I started to run out of gas. You see those little pits in the weld? Uh, it's not properly shielded, it'll start doing that. And same with these. Luckily this isn't a structural weld, this is purely cosmetic. So I just kind of finished this up. I'm gonna, I'll probably end up grinding it a little bit and going back over it once I get more gas. But it's all gonna get ground smooth regardless. Here you can see that one turned out good. I'm gonna grind that flat. And here is a corner that was done while I still had gas. And then it's actually almost pretty flat as it is. You can see it was starting to, the heat was starting to take, knock that edge off. Uh, not too worried about that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Here is the one corner I did get the cap and everything like that before I ran out of gas. As you can see, I've ground down all the welds and it's going to be a nice and smooth and kind of seamless corner. Uh, I'm going to do that with all the corners. I was looking up online different ways to remove mill scale. Mill scale is basically this grayish stuff you see here. Um, and it just happens in the process of hot rolling steel. And it's kind of all the impurities in the metal make its way to the surface. Anyways, you really shouldn't paint over it. It needs to be removed. You can just use a wire wheel. What I, instead of trying to sit here and take a flap disc to this whole frame, I uh, ordered a Craftsman Restorer, which I saw on somebody else's YouTube video. When I was looking up ways to remove mill scale and got the uh, rust and paint remover wheel for it and this thing just does amazing I mean it just it just blasts straight through this mill scale like it's nothing I don't know if you can yeah that's just debris on it but I mean it's nice and shiny and clean last night when it got here I I went ahead and I did this whole top surface of the trailer in probably 10 minutes um, which was awesome super happy with it and now I'm gonna go around and clean up the rest of the metal our tip wrench should be here tomorrow. This is our two by three piece that's gonna connect the two uh, pieces of suspension. I'll show you more about that when it gets here. I'm going around right now and before I get the frame painted, the way I'm wiring this, I'm wiring it just like my other one. Um, so I'm going ahead and drilling my access holes for my wires to be routed. This is gonna be where the marker lights go. Basically, this grommet goes in there and then this little light will be in there and that will be our front marker. The wires are gonna be fed uh, through the tongue and they're gonna come out right here through this center backbone. Gonna branch off and go over to here. And the pigtail from that light, it's gonna be able to access right there, secure it to the frame. And then come to the back here and branch out um, and do the same thing. I'm not drilling any holes over there yet because I'm gonna wait till I get the tail lights mounted and see exactly where I want the holes to be. But I just wanted to get as many of the holes drilled as possible before I paint. So if you watched my previous video, um, I left this end wide open for my wiring to go in, which left this whole tube on my other trailer um, exposed to the weather. It's been fine so far. Uh, this one, I actually just capped it off, and that is because I'm going to be welding a receiver hitch on here. So you can basically do the lock and roll hitches. You can plug them in here and pin them, or a standard ball hitch, um, and this is pretty much giving whoever gets this trailer options on what kind of hitch they want to run. They don't have to run the lock and roll hitch. They don't have to run a regular ball. They can change it at a later date. It just makes things a little easier. Um, what you see here is I've drilled some holes. There are 12 of them, three on each side all the way around. I drilled those holes there because when I weld this on, it's going to stick up a little further than that. When I weld this back in here, me personally, I feel like that's just not enough, uh, support weld, especially with the leverage this is gonna have. So basically what I'm gonna end up spot welding all these spots. And between all 12 of those spots, all the way around this tongue, I'm gonna have uh, complete confidence that it's gonna stay attached to the two by two. Um, it's not gonna break here. And as you can see, I mean, quite a bit of it is gonna be inside of here. So shouldn't be any worries about that breaking. 
Also what I've got here is two inch receiver for the rear um, for bike racks or a recovery point for the trailer or anything of that sort. Um, trailer's upside down obviously right now. This is just gonna get welded right to the bottom. Might stick it out just a little bit. Um, that's gonna get welded right to the bottom so somebody can haul their bicycles or whatever they wanna haul. Some of you may be thinking this is gonna kill the clearance under here. Uh, it will not. This 2x3 cross tube that's gonna go in between the timber and axles is actually a little taller than this. So um, this isn't gonna stick down any further than that cross tube under the trailer. Instead of the wiring coming out the end, uh, I'm gonna drill an access hole somewhere around here and then the wiring harness is gonna feed out from there. Also, they say that this stuff is weldable. But what I've done before I slip that uh, receiver over this is I've painted this stub so that way there's not just a bare metal, kind of like a bare metal surface in between there that water and moisture is gonna get up in there uh, and corrode over time. So we'll see how well the bolt is. As you can see on this top side of the hitch, you can see I did one of the spot welds there and I haven't done those two. This thing was getting pretty hot, letting it cool down, but I did do the complete top. You can see once you grind it down, it's like it never happened. Get that added strength, doesn't mess up the aesthetics of it. Not that it really matters. Um, I just like things to look nice. I also got the rear hitch, get a nice bead on that back side, and one on each side of the hitch. Once I flip it over, I'm gonna do that whole edge, and then that top lip, and that thing should be super solid. All right, we got all our axle parts in. These are just kind of sitting in their mocked up position. I'm gonna be doing, so the general rule of thumb, uh, or so which I've heard, 60% of the way back from the front of the frame right here, your main part of the frame, is where you want your tire to be. So it's right about 3.2 feet. Um, so the tire is gonna be here. The axle's pretty, it's pretty much gonna be right in line with this support. So that's kind of where they're gonna be mocked up. Uh, made some marks on the frame with a Sharpie because on the last trailer, the 1200 pound Timberins were more or less made for a two by two frame. So the holes on the 1200 pound Timberins lined up perfectly in the center of two by two. Fortunately, as you see here, the 3500 HDs do not line up with two by two. They're actually meant to line up with uh, two by three, which is, I guess, something I should have researched more before I bought them. Uh, so that's my mistake, but figured out a solution. Uh, first, I was thinking of redrilling holes, blah, blah, blah. And then thought about how this is some half inch. This actually is an inch and a half from here. The half inch will offset it and center it up. So what I'm gonna do is weld some half inch flat bar to the bottom of my frame for the timbers to rest on and that will space this up just enough to where this will be dead center in our uh, bar here so we can drill our holes and your holes not going to be all wonky and and low like that what you see here is i scooted the timbers back um, this is that half inch flat bar stock just kind of threw some welds down on it to keep it from going anywhere don't need to weld the whole thing i mean really it's going to be sandwiched in between the frame and the axle so just enough to really kind of hold it in place to that on both sides i did go ahead and take some steel it and paint under where that was going to rest and the bottom side of that flat bar right there just to keep that surface nice and sealed you see our half inch spacer put our holes about right here in the center of our two by two which is exactly what we needed that'll be plenty of support for the axle there um, it's just going to rest on that and then obviously each axle is gonna be going against itself thanks to the two by three. So between that two by three and the bolts to the frame, be super solid, no worries about that coming loose or any sort of damage happening to the main part of the axles here. So now that we know where our axles are gonna be placed, we're gonna go ahead and drill our six holes, three on each side, be able to bolt these to the frame. And then once those holes are drilled, I just got a couple more little bits of welding and then I can work on painting the bottom of this frame before I get it flipped back over. I got all our holes drilled. I just clamped the axles in place or the timbers in place so they wouldn't move on me. And I used some step bits, which I highly recommend. Seem to drill way better than just trying to use like a half inch bit. Uh, it's nice, it gets a little pilot hole and then it just quickly steps up. That made that super easy. Also drilled the holes to bolt the support bar across in between the timbrance. All right guys, so that about sums it up for part one, uh, which is just the main structure and just the gist of the trailer itself. And so now from here, you can go on and kind of do what you wanted, or you can follow me for part two, where I'm gonna be doing painting, 
electrical, fenders, showing the hitch options, and I'm actually in a separate video that will be out before part two. I will be assembling these hubs um, and showing you how to grease them and properly assemble them. If you don't already know how to do that, I'm sure it could help somebody out, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a separate video. Didn't want this video to drag out too long, so that's why I like to break them into parts. So just go ahead and like and subscribe, and be ready for part two. We'll see you then.